Hi guys! For this tutorial, we will be learning how to make a simple snake game on um, CodePen using HTML, uh, CSS, and JS. So, um, majority of it is going to be JS or also known as JavaScript. I know my past a uh, couple videos, if you watch those, I normally show my face just to make it a bit more personable. Um, however, due to the um, length of this uh, tutorial um, and the amount of code I have to do, I'm not going to show my face just because it will probably crash my computer. So I'm going to just show you on the screen right here. You guys can see I've got a snake game going. This is a snake game I've made in the past. Um, and as you can see, it is controllable by the arrow keys. Um, and the goal of the snake game um, is to, I can't get that one, is to eat food and gain length, grow big. Um, and you can only lose by hitting the sides and or uh, running into yourself, which I'll try to do once I'm a little bit bigger. But yeah, here. So once I ran into myself, it makes me restart. So I'm gonna exit out of this. I'm gonna log out so I can show you guys how to log in and or make your own account. So up in the top right corner, you're gonna click sign up or log in. I'm just gonna log in for right now. Sign up isn't too bad, you just have to have an email. So either use yours or your parents if you've got your own. Um, so I'll do log in. So you'll be on this codepen.io page as well if you're not there already. But once you log in, um, I have a little pinned up in mind, but you should see your name or some sort of avatar. Um, and then in the top left corner, you're gonna see the code pen logo and create with this rainbow bar underneath, we're gonna click pen. So here we're gonna actually start our program um, where it says the pen is mightier than the sword. This is where you're gonna, your game is gonna pop up and so you can see it while you're making it. Um, over on the left hand side is our HTML, CSS, and JS text editor boxes. Before we even get to that, we are going to click the untitled, um, that pencil next to untitled in the top left, and we're going to rename our thing. So you can name it your name or the game. So I'm just going to do snake game tutorial for you guys. So once you've done that, you're going to click save. And so now it will enable auto save. Um, if not, you can always just keep clicking save throughout. Um, but yeah, so let's start with our HTML. What we're going to do is we are going to use a very simple canvas tag. So canvas, and this is going to, um, as you guys saw in mine, my snake game didn't take up the whole screen. Um, it just took only a little uh, bit of the entire page. So canvas is going to allow us to do that. So we'll do canvas ID and canvas. And then we're going to make um, a certain width and height for our canvas. So width equals, I did 700 for mine before, so I'll keep it as that and height equals seven or 600 because I wanted my width a little bit bigger. I'm going to drag out my code screen. You guys can as well because we won't see anything just yet on our actual white program screen over here. Then we'll close alligator that and then close off that tag, which we do by open alligator, um, less than sign, forward slash canvas, and then uh, greater than sign or uh, uh, close alligator. So we're done with the HTML section. All we have to do there is make our canvas, which we've done. So here, if you guys wanna pause and keep track of that, and you can, I'll just keep that up there. But in our CSS, we're gonna um, call our uh, body, which we don't have on there. You don't necessarily need it. If you want it in HTML, you can do body um, and then body, um, as well as the HTML tags. I'm not gonna do that though, just for ease of your guys' coding. So here, do that, and we'll do body, and we're gonna give the body a background color. Oh, sorry. So background dash color, and we'll do, um, I'm gonna do light gray. You guys should see that now my background will be a light gray. I'll do a more bold color so you guys can see that. 
Instead, maybe I want black, maybe I want light blue, whichever color you want. If you use, rather than like, you could do just regular blue, um, but if you use a light or a dark variation, make sure there's no space in between it. Uh, coding colors are like this. So I'm gonna switch mine back to light gray. Um, and you can barely see it, but it is, it is gray. And then below that, we're gonna, um, as we called our canvas ID up here, we're gonna call that in our CSS section by doing hashtag or pound sign canvas. This is gonna allow us to make the display for our canvas, which is gonna be block. Um, as well, we're gonna create some margins from the side so it kind of centers our canvas more and I'm gonna do 35 px you can choose whichever you'd like I think 35 px work the best for me Those are pixels and then auto and then my border I only want to be kind of small so we'll do 2 px um, and I'm gonna make my border solid black so there we've set up our CSS and our HTML I'll keep these open for a second so you guys can pause and make sure you have all this right here but now we're gonna actually be getting into our JS. And you guys can see on the screen, over on uh, the right-hand side of the screen, we can now see that a um, canvas is brought up. We'll change the background color of the canvas so it kind of stands out more. Um, but for right now, we've got our canvas. So right now we've got our canvas. We are gonna go on to the actual JS um, code, which is majority of our stuff. So I'm gonna hide HTML and the CSS because we don't need those at all from here on out. Before we start going too much further in that, um, in this settings section, over under pen settings, JS, we see that there's this URL here. It's not an actual URL. It's just an example one. We're going to actually paste in, um, so copy and paste or type in um, this specific URL that is a source code for a um, different program that someone made um, and uses a function that we will be calling. So I'm gonna exit out of that real quick and go grab that. I'll be right back. So here, we're gonna, I'm gonna copy and paste this in here and I'll highlight it. Please pause and type in this exact URL. Make sure it's word for word, everything that's in there. This is gonna be a, I can even click on it for you guys or copy and paste and just show you what it is. Um, you can click on this I right here to see, and it just shows you it's this big long code, which we don't wanna type out, but it helps us for a certain function called type of, which we'll use later. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we save and close that. So now that's imported into our game, but in the JS, we're gonna type a money sign and then an open document. Um, dot ready and then open parentheses function with a few more open and close parentheses now you see after this set of parentheses right here following function there's a close parentheses here we're going to want to press return or enter a couple times to get that down further and i'm going to go like this now to just move so we can see our code better but this is gonna be the very end of our code because everything in our document is gonna be in this ready function to tell our game to start and go. So here, we're gonna start by um, creating some variables. And the way we can do that is first inside a function, every function that we'll have in here, you need to have an open and close curly brace. Um, I call them that, I'm sure they're called something different. And I'm going to delete these extra lines of code from 17 through 8. I'll actually just highlight and delete them. Um, but this now is going to be our line 7 and 8, well, 9 and 10 now. Um, we'll change and get further along, but those are going to be our very ending um, brackets or parentheses for our game. So here, I'm going to start typing our code. We're going to start allocating some variables, which is denoted by var, V-A-R, it's just shorthand. 
and we're going to set up our canvas. So we'll do var canvas equals uh, money sign again, and then parentheses to call that from HTML, our canvas, we're going to do that hashtag or pound sign canvas like we did in CSS. And then we're going to use uh, an array zero. And I'll explain better what arrays are later when we get to the snake variable in just a few lines. But next, we're going to have var ctx, or you can also call it var context. I'm going to use ctx um, for just keeping track of um, all our variables and not having too much lines of code and too big of words. So canvas dot get context. And what this is going to do is inside these parentheses, we're going to use some quotations. We're going to say 2D. We're going to close that out with a semicolon. Every line of code, we're going to close out with semicolon um, just to keep it from running into the next code. But what this whole section, this um, canvas dot get context um, uh, 2D means is that we're denoting that our canvas is only two dimensional. So when it comes to our next two variables, which are going to be width and height. So W for width um, is going to be um, width and height are our only um, area measurements or um, location measurements we're really going to use except for X and Y coordinates. Um, but that is only because it is not 3D or even 4D, it is 2D. So we're going to do money sign, open quotes again, hashtag canvas to call that. And this time it's going to be dot width, which we set up in that HTML, our width and our height. Okay. So here, dot width and semicolon, and we'll do the same for height. And the height is in the um, height direction. So hashtag canvas, again, to call that um, ID, we'll do height. So there we have those variables. These only apply to the canvas. So above that first variable, I'm going to type in a comment, which you can do with two forward slashes, which are underneath the question mark on your keyboard. And I'm going to just uh, type canvas variables to keep track of all of our stuff. So canvas variables. The next section is going to be game variables. And these are going to be our most important game variables. So we'll have um, var food, which is going to be our food that our snake eats, var score, because the game has to have a score, var level. Um, we're going to also have a level on our game. And then additionally, we're going to use um, var snake array which an array, now I'll explain, an array is a set of cells to make up the snake. Um, and so a, an array can look like this. And so there are five numbers in this array. And those are numbers in the array are zero, one, two, three, four. They can be whatever numbers, but there are five elements or numbers in this array. So in our case, it's gonna be five blocks or five cells of the snake. So after that, we wanna tell um, the width of the cell or the area kind of of the cell um, to equal a certain amount. So that's going to be denoted by CW, which just means cell width. And I'm going to set mine to 20. And how you can figure this out is your cell width just has to be divisible um, to your width and your height. So 20 goes into 735 times and then uh, 20 goes into our height value of 630 um, times. So that is divisible. So that means there'll be or 35 and 30 cells um, overall. So for the snake to go through. So next, we're going to also do a variable called direction, which will just do variable D. And that won't equal anything just yet trying to re redo ones I already did. So these are all the game variables that we'll really need. There will be a couple more in the different functions we'll use, but for right now, these are the main ones. Now we're gonna actually create another function inside of our main game function. And this is gonna be called function 
initial with a um, set of parentheses after. And again, every function has to have anything that goes inside that function is going to be embodied in an open and closed brace, which I have on lines 18 and 20 for mine. So we'll do first, we're going to set a default direction, which we'll do by D equals and then in quotations, right. So it says our default direction or our start direction for our snake is going to be right. And then after that, we're going to have um, the score equal zero initially, our level equal one initially, and then we're going to also have these variable or these function names we don't have yet, but we're going to have create snake and create food and just hang tight for those. You're going to keep, you're going to type those in here, but we won't actually have any meaning for them just yet. So after that, we're going to also do inside of this um, initial function, we're going to do an if statement. So if parentheses type of, and this is where our imported source code and settings came into play. So if type of um, game loop does not equal, which is denoted by exclamation point equal, that means does not, does not equal undefined, then, sorry, then is not going to be inside of here, but it's going to be embodied in open and close braces again. Then um, we'll say game loop, or sorry, clear interval game loop. And now I'm sure you're wondering, oh, and semicolon, I'm sure you're wondering what game loop is. Either before or after that if statement, you can set a variable called var. Um, oh, actually, you don't even have to do var game loop because that also comes from the extra code. Game loop equals set interval and paint 100. What this means is that it'll paint at a certain speed for um, the cells of the snake. So it'll paint it at 100 milliseconds. So then we're going to close that off with a semicolon as well. Now we're done with this first function initial. What we're going to do, and we won't do this for the rest of the um, functions, just because they'll be called in different situations, but the initial is always called because um, that is the start of our snake game. So whenever we restart or initially start the game, initial always needs to start. So on line 32, you call a function by doing this. So initial parentheses, um, semicolon. After that, I am going to above there, and you guys don't have to do this, but just to keep track of this for us, we are going to have our initial game setup function. So that's just a comment. Again, it won't show up in our code, but that's just going to help me. If we have any debugging to do after, um, then we can go back to there and know where we have to go. So then another function is going to be creating the snake. So we'll do create snake function. Again, you do not have to comment as well with me, but these are just for you guys to follow along. We're going to do function. This one's going to be called, as we saw up here on line 23 of mine, create underscore snake, parenthes open parentheses, close parentheses. We're going to do here. So create underscore snake, open, close parentheses. And then again, every function is embodied in those open and close curly braces. So here we're going to call a new variable length, which is going to be the length of the snake. And we're going to tell it to be variable length five. So as you guys saw in my program at first, um, the snake came out with five blocks. If you don't remember that, that's fine. Um, but it came out with five blocks initially. It wasn't just one little block. You can set it as one if you want. Um, I found that five makes it actually look like a snake initially. So then after that, we're going to do snake array. As I said, an array is that um, set of numbers inside the uh, block here. So snake array is just going to be empty 
There's nothing in there. You don't have to do a space in between there. You can just leave it like that. Uh, semicolon. And then we're going to do another for loop in here. So for variable i. Um, oh, wait, sorry. For variable i equals length minus 1. So if the counter is um, 4, then i... And variable i is simply just a counter for the amount of times this for loop will go through. If i is greater than or equal to 0, then you're going to minus, minus, so that it does not, um, when your snake moves, it doesn't look like it's just carrying on its tail. It's going to look like it's actually moving and not just leaving its tail behind. So inside this, we'll do snake dot or snake underscore array which is our snake array variable we'll do dot push and push means um this is going to create a horizontal snake starting from the top left so we'll do that by um starting in that top left position by x i and then y zero so that's going to start it at that very top portion of my screen where I'm using my mouse. That's where my snake came initially. So we'll do that. Now we're going to leave that entire function create snake um, area, and we're going to go to create the food. So we'll do create food function, and that's going to be done again by creating a function. This time, as we called in that first initial function, create food, it's create underscore food. We're gonna wanna call it the same exact thing. Make sure it's all spelled right or else it won't carry on. Another set of open and close curly braces. And we'll do food. So our food variable we already called earlier so we don't have to say variable food or var food. It's gonna do food equals open close parentheses and we'll do a, a return so we've got some space to see. And this is going to set the food at a random location. So let me just type this in. And make sure when you're typing this that this all is exactly as typed. Um, what this first line did was set the x position of the food. Um, and so it's going to first here, it's going to create a random variable within that um, width of our page and cell width. So it's actually on there and it's got to be the size of our cells. So it's the same size as the food so that we can actually eat it. And then this math.round is going to make sure that when it chooses a math.random or um, divides the cell width that is always rounded to an absolute integer value and not uh, a decimal in our case because then it won't correlate with the snake's location. So we'll do the same for the um, Y position except for the Y position this time. Oh, and sorry, we're not going to do a semicolon on 51 after that line of code. We're going to do a comma. So then we're going to also do math random instead of the width being divided or subtracted and divided by the cell width as in the first set of x positions, we're gonna be using the height since y coordinates or y um, axis uh, is in relation to height. So h minus cw divided by cw. And we'll do another comma after that. And then we're gonna to wanna to close off that food section with a um, semicolon. Once we've done that, this is going to create a cell uh, with the x, y coordinates of the food, so the positions, and make sure that it actually fits on the width and height that we set up of the canvas, and so it's not just off the screen. So now we're done with that one. Really quick little function. Now we're going to do another function called create. Oh, create. Uh, paint function and the paint function is going to be pretty long so bear with me but here we're going to do oh, function paint do it the same way we did before all functions are set up the same way they just have different names 
And here we're going to have, we're going to use that context or CTX variable that we set way above, I'll show. So on line five for me, variable context, that's going to be those properties and the two dimensional properties of the canvas. So CTX dot fill style. And so this is going to actually fill that canvas to be instead of light gray as, as it is in the background, it's going to now be white. Um, and then in our, and you won't see it yet because it's not called, the paint function isn't fully called yet, but we'll have white and then CTX fill rect. Um, and you're going to use these coordinates, zero, zero, uh, width, height. And here, that'll set that. And then after that, we're going to do CTX. Oops. I don't know why that's okay there. CTX uh, stroke style. And so this, that stroke style, and then we'll use stroke rect as well. This is going to make it so that when you, when your snake is moving, it just, again, doesn't keep uh, trailing on that tail. It's going to um, create a, it's going to paint over those snake cells, those old ones, um, and just blend it in with the background. So this white is going to be your background of your actual canvas. And the CTX um, stroke style here, black, is going to be um, around your cells. So you can do white if you want or a different color. You'll see how that plays in later. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do CTX. I'm just going to keep it black for right now. CTX stroke rect. And again, we'll have those same coordinates, 0, 0, W, H. And then here, this next section is going to be what's actually going to make the snake move. It won't coordinate to the um, keyboard yet. We'll do that at the very end. But still within that function paint, we're going to type a new variable called head underscore x, which is going to be the um, position of your, or the x position of your head of your snake, um, which coordinates to snake array value zero or element zero. So in your array, as I said before, there's different elements um, and it doesn't count your elements as one. So say you have five elements in your array, it's not gonna be one through five, it's gonna be zero through four. So zero is your first element spot in the array. So here, We'll do that and then dot x so it's coordinating to the x position of your snake array and then var head y is going to be the exact same except for it's going to coordinate to the y position at the end but it's still going to be in that zeroth element because that's the very first element of your array which will be our snake array and from there we're going to tell it that if the direction is in direction is in the right equal equal right because if it's not a number it's not going to be just equal it's got to be an operator equals equals it's going to say head x plus plus okay but then also we want to do that for all the other positions and this means that if you're pointing in the right direction your head x um, array value is going to be in the positive x direction, so it's going to add one to it. And then the same for left, it's going to be d equals equals left, and then we'll do head x is minus minus because left is in left on the x coordinate, um, or on the Cartesian coordinate system, is in the negative direction, so the negative x direction. So then we'll do the ups and downs as well. So if D equals equals So again, same as the positive X and positive Y or positive X and negative X up is in the positive Y direction. So that'll be head 
underscore y plus plus and then oh and i missed an else if sorry on that line but then we'll also do else if again and we don't use else's because if you're using an if else statement you can only use one else but if you've got multiple else's um, or other conditions other than that first if statement then you're going to use else if so then you can have multiple of those and keep listing them and here had y minus minus after that you're going to go down and create a new section still in that function paint um, and this is going to tell us um, whether or not we need to restart the game. So what we just did in this section is we created movement. So I'll type above that a cat or comment. Let me actually space this. A comment, um, create movement of s snake. And then down below that, we're going to do a new section called when to restart game. And so as I said, when I was showing you guys my game, um, the game ends or restarts whenever the snake runs into the wall or runs into itself. So we'll do an if statement for that. So it's going to be a kind of long if statement. But we're going to do if head x equals equals negative 1, which means that that head x position um, is not within the actual cells, then or within the actual canvas, then it will restart the game meaning it went off the edge. Additionally, if head x equals um, width divided by cell width, then that means it went off the page. So again, the array elements go from, in our case, my width was 700. So it goes 0 to 699 as the cell positions, not 1 to 700. So if um, the cell width uh, is 20 in my case. 700 divided by 20 is 35, so that means my actual cells that I have are for the snake to move are only 0 to 34, since I've got 35 cells when you divide 700 by uh, 20. So it would be 0 to 34. This means that if it was 35, then it would be off the page as well. So there we're going to do the same exact situation for head Y. And these operators here that I have, the two straight lines connected to each other, there's no space in between. They're just um, uh, straight line, straight line underneath the delete key. Um, that can be found by um, using shift on that uh, key. That means or. So if head X equals equals negative 1 or head X equals equals um, width divided by cell width, so 35 in our case, um, or head y equals equals negative 1, or head y equals equals height divided by cell width. So this would be 600 is our height divided by cell width, which is 20, would be 30. Um, again, that means that there's 30 cells within the, uh, or in the y direction that the snake can move. And so it goes 0 to 29 as the cell position numbers. Um, so if it goes to 30, that means it's off the page. But then before that, we've got one more, and this checks if it runs into itself. So we're going to call this collision, which is going to be another function we'll make in a bit. Um, but it's got to have these variables, head x, head y, and snake array inside some parentheses after collision. So there, now we have our big if statement, okay? And that tells us if any of these apply or any of these are true, then we need to, so on line 75 and 77, I just made those open and close braces again. Um, we're going to have to restart the game. So we'll do initial, which will redo that initial function that we did that sets up the full game, and we'll do return. After that, we're still going to be inside this function paint. Oh, let me control Z that, sorry. We're going to still be inside this function paint. Let me just scroll down so you guys can see. Um, and we're going to now do a... 
um, new if statement as well. So this one's now going to pertain to the position of the head and the tail of the snake for the food. Um, and so what we're going to do is if the head position or the x head position equals equals the x position of the food so that's food dot x and which is by the two ampersands which can be found on the seven key if you press shift do that twice and the head y position of the snake equals the y position of the food so food dot y then we'll do that again by open and close braces, do return, um, then variable, which is going to be called var tail, equals x head x, um, comma, y colon head y. And this means that the uh, tail will then be, if it if the um, snake eats the food, then the tail will become the head, um, which is a little bit confusing, but it adds up well together. So then as the um, snake eats the food in this if statement, then the score will go up by one as well. So that's score plus plus. You can also do just plus one, but it's easier to just, in my mind, do score plus plus. Um, and so then... As well, we want to create new food, which we did with that create food function. We're just going to call it. So create food. Again, now we just want to make sure that we are doing everything we need to do. So we're going to do an else statement as well. So if, um, and we don't need any conditions in there, but if that is not true, if the head and the food are not in the right position and they're not eating it, then the var tail just equals um, snake array dot pop and open parentheses close parentheses semicolon this just pops out the last cell so then it keeps looking like it's moving um, and the tail does not become the head because the tail does not or the snake does not add length if it doesn't eat the food it just keeps going now this whole section right here this if else section from lines 80 through 89 allow the snake to eat food we're gonna have a few more things inside of this paint function we're gonna do for there i equals zero and we're gonna do i less than and this is gonna be another counter so for variable i equals zero at first um, if i is less than snake array length, semicolon, then i++, plus plus, then it'll add more length. And that is also going to create a new variable called c, which is pretty much just the cells of the snake array. And that can be chosen or denoted by snake array open block, close block, I. And so I just means any number in that snake array um, is going to be the amount of cells of our snake. And so we want to paint those cells. So paint underscore cell. And we're going to paint our snake to be in that cell X and that cell Y position. We'll do, I'm going to do light green. After that for loop, we're going to do a for loop for the um, paint cell as well, or the, sorry, the food um, cell. So we'll do paint cell again, just outside of a for loop, because it's just going to be all the time. I'm going to do food.x, comma, food.y, um, and we'll say light coral I'll choose. So again, if you choose a um, color, you're going to want to keep it all together. 
Um, these are just the colors I had in my game that I showed you guys, so I'm going to keep them the same. And we're going to make two new variables after that called variable score text. And that's going to be um, the in the bottom left-hand corner of my program screen that I showed you guys in the beginning with the game that was already made. It said score and level and kept track of it. So score colon inside those quotes plus the score variable that we made. And then again for the level bar level text equals in quotes level um, plus level variable. So that'll just keep that on our screen, um, which we'll see in a second. Doing that, we gotta make sure it actually comes on our screen. So we'll do CTX again, which is the properties of our screen, our canvas. So fill, CTX fill text, uh, score text, five H minus five. And that's just gonna, these five H minus five is just the position that I chose for it. So you can do whatever X, Y coordinate that you want for that. But just has to be within the cell width um, and cell height range that you chose, that array value. So CTX uh, fill text for our level text as well. That'll be 60 H minus five for this one the other one that I chose if you want it in that same spot that I had now we're done with this function paint we got to make sure that we do paint cell though and so we're gonna make a new function called I'm just gonna um, comment out create paint wait paint cell function which is a bit different than the actual cell or the paint function that we just made it's gonna be function paint cell open parentheses x y and then color and we'll do and here we'll do some more of that context variable so, so ctx fill style oh not parentheses sorry color um, and then we're going to do CTX and don't actually put a color in there. Just keep it called color. So rect, and that's going to be X MCW. So X coordinate times the cell width, Y coordinate time this, times the cell width, and then cell width, cell width. And then again, we'll use that stroke. Um, so stroke style that we did earlier stroke style equals um, and this time it's going to be I'll do white um, and that'll correlate as well to our game which I'll show you ctx stroke rect x times cw y times cw 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 I'll close that off and now we've got our paint cell function. Lastly, we want to do a function for, let me just save this real quick. All right, so sorry guys, I just switched to a different browser just because my browser started running pretty slow. But this last function we're going to make before we allocate the keys to the keyboard is going to be function check, or not check collision, sorry function collision and this is going to check if our snake runs into itself that's going to be x y um, array and this won't be the snake array it's going to be a different array before that let me just comment um, create uh, collision check function okay so then inside there we're going to use some more of those curly cube braces and we'll do a for loop that says for var or for var i equals zero. Um, so initial initially variable i equals zero. Again, just our counter. If it is less than 
array length, which will denote what array is. Also, my screen's telling me I need to save, so I just saved. So if it's less than array length, semicolon, then um, add to the counter. So go back through that loop. And then inside there, it's going to say if, so if statement, if array i, so the, um, certain i component in the array, um, at the x position equals equals x and array i of y equals equals y. Then underneath there, we'll say return true. Um, and then outside of that for loop, it's just going to say return false if that's not the case. So we have that. Now we just need to make sure that we also put some keys in there so that when we um, actually want to control our snake, it'll do all that. So we're going to do money sign open parentheses document. And then we'll do key down function. So key down function E, we'll call it. And then we're going to do, oh, inside, sorry, after that set of parentheses, inside that loop, again, we'll also do a new set of close braces, open braces. And we're going to say, we're going to set up a variable called key. So var key equals e dot which which is going to choose the event at which that key is pressed and after that we're gonna it's gonna tell us when the key is pressed it'll do what it's told to do but we got to make sure that it doesn't um we add some if else if statements so that if we're going in one direction say we're going to the right when we start we can't just go backwards right away that'd be too easy to get away from hitting the wall so instead you have to go like down and then there or up and then there, you can't just reverse gear real quick. So we're gonna do if key, so that variable key equals equals, and this is where it's gonna get a little bit tricky. Um, just trust me on this. It's We're gonna type in the number 37 because keys on your keyboard are given numbers in JavaScript. And so um, the left keyboard or the left key on your keyboard is number 37. So we'll do, if this is true, key equals 37, and D does not equal right, so it's not already facing in the right direction, then D can go in the left direction, so D equals left. Oh. And then we'll do that for all the other keys, and. I'll just make sure you guys get those numbers for those keys right. So if key equals equals, uh, we'll do the left key is 39. I know it's kind of out of order. Actually, I'll just do the numerical order. So 38 is the up key. Um, so if key equals up or 38 and D is not already in the down down position, then D equals up, and so on. The next key is 39, which is the right key. So if key equals equals 39, and D does not equal left, then D goes in, so the direction then is the right direction. And lastly, we'll do else if for the, making sure that the down position is correct. So if key equals equals down, which is 40, and D does not equal up at that time, it's not going in the up position currently, then it can go down. Okay, so now we've allocated all of our keys. Um, 
we are now going to make sure our code is all correct. Looks like right now there is something up that is not correlating to our code. So I'm going to go and debug real quick and I'll get back to you guys and let you know what's going on. All right, so I took a little bit to decode or um, debug and try to figure out where all my errors were that I made you guys go through as well. So I'm just gonna uh, fix those right now. So on line uh, 41, where it says snake array, your lines might be different, um, but it's in that for loop there i equals length minus one and so on um, inside this create snake function this line snake array dot push right in here you guys currently have it set that it's like this just the parentheses around this x colon i and y colon zero but we need an open curly brace and a closed curly brace which is completely my bad so just this section needs to get fixed on line 41 and then on line, around a line 72 for me. So when we had the when to restart game section, that long if statement, I spelled collision wrong. First I had collosion. So I changed it to collision. And then a little bit lower around lines 85 and 87, this else statement, I just had else var tail equals snake array dot pop, but I forgot to put this line on line 87 so you can pause there and take that one so tail dot x equals head underscore x um, semicolon and so on that means that else the tail equals the head um, or the tail x position equals the head x position um, and then following that right after that else section we did not include or well, i did not include sorry uh, snake underscore array dot unshift parentheses tail um, semicolon so there that will fix that and then finally you should see this but I noticed and this is kind of curious to me so it might not be uh, the same for you but your game should work now the only thing is it might be um, the up and down keys might be opposite so I went and switched those. I switched the uh, down key to 38 and the up key to 40 instead. So I just, I kept all of this the same, the else if, but I changed this D equals to down and not up. And then else if here, uh, D equals is now up instead of down. So that should help your game work. If you wanna change your view, I'll click save one more time. If you wanna look at your actual whole page, then you can do full page view. And here, now we can play our snake game. And again, as you guys can see, um, there's a lot of different color components in this. You can go back to each of those colors and kind of experiment and see what you have and can work with. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sorry for my debugging. Um, I'm not sure why that last key switch up occurred, um, but the other ones were just syntax and mistakes by me. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial.